breath of God oh. upon this place would you blow mighty breath of God mm. in power and grace Mighty breath of God, move upon this place, Lord, mighty breath of God, move, move in power and grace, cause we are hungry. We are thirsty, Lord, we're ready, ready for our pouring. We are hungry, we are thirsty, Lord, we're ready for our
sanctuary Give him praise He is great and mighty Every nation Every nation rise and sing For the Lord has done great things Give him praise Sing it again, church Give him praise Give him praise In the sanctuary trumpet. He's going to help us bless the Lord. We're about to lift up a shout in this room that I believe all of Volusia County will feel the effects of it because something happens when you glorify the name of Jesus. I said something happens when you glorify the name of Jesus. That's the name that's above every other name. Oh, we're about to lift that name. Are you ready? Ask your neighbor, are you ready to release a shout oh, that confuses the enemy? Just 
Come on, we have some amazing people getting baptized this morning. Can we praise God for that? Come on, can you praise God for new life springing forth this morning? Sound. 
people decided to get baptized. I said seven people in the service decided to give their hearts to Jesus. Somebody give a call. We need to spend a moment and just thank God for what he has done. If you're not afraid, if you're not ashamed to bless the name of Jesus, I dare you to get a praise in your mouth for what the Lord has done, what he's doing right now. Somebody shout hallelujah. in this place but also on every other campus and so far this year as of this moment right now 250 people have I said 250 people have been baptized somebody give a praise for what he's done only Jesus
Somebody thank him. Precious Holy Spirit here. Precious Holy Spirit is here.
Eternal life. 
how freely I can ask him, for his blood has washed me clean. Let the top of heaven rest upon the brightness of me. Let the top of heaven rest upon the brightness
After 26 years, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Somebody worship the Lord. Somebody worship the Lord. Somebody worship the Lord. Oh, this is the atmosphere of angels. Hey. This is the atmosphere of miracles. You're filled with the Holy Ghost. Why don't you worship in your prayer language right now? Hey, 
We worship and adore you, Lord. We worship and adore you, Lord. Yes, we do. The angels cry, holy, holy, holy. Oh, Somebody out of somebody go in with me right now. Somebody go in with me right now. God will change your life if you worship Him. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. your hands all over this place and let this be the house of the surrendered all over this place from the front to the back can we be the house of the surrendered will you just surrender it all to him lord make us a vessel lord we surrender will you just surrender every place in your heart every place in your life surrender it all surrender it all let's be the house of the surrendered this morning Oh, we surrender it all. Let's make room for him. The Lord is healing people right now. The Lord is healing people right now. Hallelujah. Somebody raise your hands and receive. Somebody raise your hands and receive. Oh, God is healing right now. God is healing right now. The Lord is strengthening right now. The Lord is bringing hope right now. The Lord is fixing families right now. Yeah, but it's all in your worship. It's all in your willingness to press past what you feel. Press past what you see. Somebody worship the Lord. Oh, I feel him in the room. I feel him in the room. I'm not hurrying out of this moment. I'm not rushing out of this moment. Oh, somebody needs to just get lost in the presence of the Lord. You've been under stress long enough. You've been worried about your future long enough. You've been stressed out long enough. There's peace in the presence of the Lord. There's hope in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. There's deliverance in the presence of the Lord. You've been trying to fix it, but you can't. But here in His presence, anything is possible.
nothing but all you have given me Jesus bring new wine out of me so make me a vessel come on sing everybody make me an offering make like he's hovering and brooding over people's homes right now how many of you can say holy spirit whatever you want out of my life that's what i want whatever you want to do in me and through me and with me i believe that there's something to be said when we learn to live from a place of gratitude i think there's something to be said when we learn to Instead of being upset about all that we don't have and all that hasn't gone right, we need to evaluate just how good God has been to us and live from that place of gratitude. And it's in that place of gratitude that God says, I'll come and I'll visit you because if you thank me, I'll show up. And I'm looking at people right now and maybe everything is just not perfect. But how many of you would say, Apostle, even if it's not perfect, I've got so many reasons to be thankful today. I've just, I've lost count. So we have come to this moment right now and we're at a place of total surrender. I hear you, Lord. I hear the Holy Spirit say, abandonment where we're just gonna abandon and give up everything that we've been trying to make happen and we're gonna give it all to God. Some of you have allowed your situations and the enemy in that's come against you to bully you, and push you, cause you to forget just how good God has been to you. But if the Lord has been good to you and now you say, Lord, I wanna be exactly what you want me to be, I want you to raise up your hands right now and I want our worship team to sing this with me. Make me a vessel. Sing it, y'all. Make, Make me a vessel. Make me an offering.
not going to try to have you raise your hands or try to sneak you up, but you know that in your life, you're not where you need to be with God. There are unsurrendered, unsubmitted places. There's sin in your life. And the Holy Spirit is so in this moment right now that I don't have to even preach to give people a chance to be saved. The Holy Spirit will do more in a second than I can do in a lifetime. So we're going to sing this again. And if you know you're not right with the Lord, there's something to be said, babe, about a public confession, about publicly saying, I need this Jesus. I need this touch. And if you'll come today, man, in this atmosphere, God will turn your whole world around. He'll change everything in your life. There's a young lady in here in the front. She said it was seven years ago today that we were came. And I came forward and gave it all to the Lord. God will do just for you what he did for her and her family. If you know that there's things that ought not be in your life that have kept you from the Lord and on this Memorial Day weekend you say, Apostle, I want Jesus. I want Jesus. My way's not working. I want Jesus. If you want to come as the team sings this, I'm going to pray with you. Begin to move right now if you want to surrender your life to the Lord. Here he comes right now. Come on. If you want to come, sing, team. Sing. Come on. Here they come. Sing. I wish you would rejoice while people are coming. Come on, if you want a new beginning and you want a fresh start, move from the overflow right now. Move from the balcony right now. That's it. Come on. Come on. Come on. There's young people God is dealing with right now. There's entire families that God wants to shift right now. Oh, come on. Here they come. Here they come. Mama bringing their children. Ha. Hallelujah. Sisters bringing brothers. Come on. Husbands bringing wives and wives bringing husbands. We got to have a change. Yeah, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Ooh, come on, come on. You carried it long enough. You carried it long enough. Give it to Jesus and say, make me a vessel. You still want to come? I'll hold it for you. Here come young people right now. Here come young people right now. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Come, come right now. All you have given me. Jesus. Come on, I feel like there's more. This is a great crowd today on Memorial Day. If you need to come and surrender, see, make me. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. In me. Here they come. Jesus, bring new wine. Jesus, bring new wine. We're going to sing where there is new wine. If you need to come, come. I'm about to play with people.
Come on, if you can see what I'm seeing, people are repenting already. People are weeping already. Y'all, we got to say it one more time. I'm watching young people weep, fall into their parents' arms. Come on and say it where there is new wine. Everybody worship the Lord. Where there is new wine, there is new power. There is new freedom. The kingdom is here. I lay down my own to carry on. Y'all, I'm sorry. I still see people moving. We're going to open altars up and if you need to come and give it to Jesus right now is the moment where there is behind. We're going to leave our struggles behind. I lay down my old flame to carry your new fire today. Are you ready to do that? So here's what I want everybody to do in the whole room. I want you to take your hand and put it over your heart right now. The reason you do that is because in the Bible, the heart is the place of decision. And when you give your heart away to the Lord, you're giving him everything. You're giving him your mind. You're giving him your past. You're giving him your present moment. And you're giving him your future. So when you put your hand on your heart, you're saying, Lord, I don't want to do this without you. So one hand on your heart, and then raise up your other hand, if you will. When you raise your hand, it represents a few things. Number one, it represents surrender. Somebody came up behind you and grabbed you. You'd throw up your hands and say, you got me. When you hold that hand up, what you're saying is, Lord, you got me. I give it to you. But you know, in school, when you knew the answer, what did the teacher say to do? Raise your hand. So you got your hand on your heart, and you're raising your other hand, and you're saying, hey, my answers have not been working, but I have an answer today, and it's Jesus. So you're ready to give your heart to the answer this morning. Everybody in the room, pray this prayer after me. Pray, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father forgive, me. forgive me. I've been trying it my way, and my way doesn't work. But I know there's a better way, and there's a higher way. And that's your way. So today, forgive me for every sin. Anything that's come between me and you and you and me, I surrender. Jesus, you are the Lord. You are the Savior for my life. I surrender. I surrender my past. I surrender my right now. And I surrender my future. Make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever. 
you want me to be. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Now I want everybody just to stretch your hands toward these right now. And if you're in the altars today, I want you to slip your hands up. Pastor Dawn, we're going to go a direction here in a moment, but I don't want anybody to rush out. This is the atmosphere of angels and miracles and salvation. Almost anything can happen in this atmosphere. But Pastor Dawn, I want you to pray over these. I want you to pray over these. This is the presence of the Lord. And this is what you've just invited in your life. This doesn't leave when you leave this place, but everywhere you go now, he abides in you and you abide in him and his peace goes with you. Lord, I thank you for every surrendered life that's here today. Whew. Many of us can remember the moment that we came to this place of laying it all down, Lord, because we're tired. We're tired of fighting. We're tired of trying to do it our own way and it not working out. But Lord, you said that you are the way, you are the truth, and you are the life. As we have invited you in, you are now life to us and your light shines within us. Lord, that no longer do we live in darkness. No longer are we having to grope about, wondering where we're going or what we're supposed to do. But you have come now to be the light of our life. Father, I pray that from this moment on, you will go before them. You said, Lord, that your word is a lamp to their feet and a light to their path. I thank you, Lord, that as they leave this place, you're ordering their steps, Father, to the future, to the promise, to the plan that you have created for them and made them for. Father God, I pray your blessing over them and every attack of the enemy, I rebuke it now off of them in the name of Jesus. Every bondage that has been over their life, I break it now. I declare the blood of Jesus covers them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I declare that they walk in liberty and freedom for where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Lord, right now I declare there's freedom coming over negative mindsets. There's freedom coming, Lord God, over addictions. There's freedom coming in every part of their life. In Jesus' name, as they have invited you to be King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, now we bow our will to yours. We bow our will to your word. Oh, come on, church. Maybe there's some people in here today and you've served the Lord, but there's some, there some things you need to bow before him this morning. Let's get it all laid down. Father God, we bow our will to your will. Father, any way that we have been still going our own direction and not surrender to your way and to your word. Father God, you said that we, you would know that we love you because we obey your Thank word. You. So Lord God, right now we, we build, we yield our will to your will, our mind to your mind, our life to your life in yes. us. And we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise for every salvation, every rededication yes. in these altars right now. In in the name of Jesus, we pray and let the church shout amen. And why don't we celebrate with heaven Come on this now. morning? Let's Come celebrate on now. With heaven. Come amen. on now and give the Lord a praise. Amen. amen. Come on now and give the Lord a praise. I want our altar workers to just go and pray with these very quickly. I want everybody else to just, I know we've been standing a while, but if you don't mind, remain standing for just one more moment. Uh, I'm going to give people a chance to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. How many of you believe that's real? Do you believe that's real? But just before I do, I want to give you a chance to give to God today. Uh, listen, how many of you would admit that God has blessed you way beyond you, what, what you're worthy of? I was thinking today as I came how blessed I am. So this is your moment. You know what? If you'd like to sit down for a moment, you can. If you'd like to sow into this atmosphere, it's very important that you sow, that you give in your life. I want to be a giver. Who wants to be a giver in your life and not just a taker? So I want you to take your offerings right now. I want you to hold them before the Lord. And uh, 
I was telling somebody sitting on the front row today that was sitting close to me in the glory of the Lord. Somebody give God praise for baptism, salvation. Stay right here with me, babe. For transformation that just took place in these altars. How many, I, I, and I told the person on the front row, I said, this is a New Testament church. How many of y'all glad to be in a church that operates like a New Testament church? <laughs> I'm so thankful for that. And, you know, we've... Uh, We've been so dedicated to missions and building churches, and I just, even this week, and we're going to have to raise it, I did it by faith. We're trying to build churches now in uh, Buddhist countries and Miramar and places like that, and uh, we were trying to do it in, in Iraq, and we've had to put that off for one year because we've got so much resistance there. But I've shifted now to places like Miramar, places where there's a stronghold of Buddhism. And it really is a radical thing. But I just felt led. Our church is going to plant three churches in Miramar and in that area. Give God a praise for that. And now give God a praise that it costs $45,000, but we're going to raise it and do it. But this is a New Testament church, and we're committed to that. And... All the things that we do, we couldn't do it without your generosity. So today, I would challenge you, if you're not a giver, become one. You can give online. You can text to give. You can give in an envelope. You can give in an app. In this moment, I wouldn't miss a chance to give. So take your offerings and hold it before the Lord right now. You by live stream. Everybody ought to sow some kind of seed. Babe, I want us to sow a seed this morning because of the atmosphere. Father, in Jesus' name, as people give, bless them be with them. Bless their gifts and their offerings in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Folks, if you would, are able, can you find your seat just for a moment? Let's go ahead and give to God. You by live stream, you can give as well. Babe, you can sit down. Worship team, just stay close. I'm not going to really preach. Look down your row and say sure. <laughs> I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit. How many of you are glad to be in a Pentecostal church this morning? If, if you're still going to pray with people in the altars, guys, would you mind just taking them over to the side with you just a little bit and ministering to them? Would you take them right over here? And let's take some time and spend with these. Take some families. Just take them right over here. Let's give all of our people in the altars a great big God bless you. We don't want to hinder one thing that God is doing. Is anybody glad to be in a Pentecostal church this morning? If you're glad to be in a Pentecostal church, would you make a little noise right now? This is a... So let me tell you what's going on today. People say, well, Apostle, are, are we still having revival? You better bet your, your little toe we are. Come on. But we're doing things a little bit differently. Uh, we we sat down with our people and, and just prayed about it because we have so many folks now that are joining us. Listen to me. And people are flying in when they know that we have revival services. And we're going to start having revival weekends once a month and anything else that God wants to do. How many of y'all know we always open for the move of God? We're very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And uh, so tonight we've got Bishop Kevin Wallace coming. And if I were you, man, I wouldn't let anything stop me from being in the service tonight because it's going to be supernatural. How many of y'all love Bishop Kevin Wallace? If, and I'm telling you, if you haven't been in a service with him, it is the most incredible thing. And he told me <laughs> that he's all stirred up about the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm coming. I said, well, boy, you better come and preach. He said, I'm ready. He said, I'm preaching at my church. Don't diss the dove. Hallelujah. I said, well, come on, Bishop. But uh, he said, it's Pentecost. He said, I'm, I'm wearing a suit. So he put all kind of pressure on me, and I put my suit on. Come on. But we don't care if you wear it. We don't care what you wear. We want you to come tonight. It's going to be. How many of y'all ready for more revival? Make a little noise if you're ready for more. And you say, well, Apostle, my, my children are going to be tired. They, they need to get in bed. Listen, it's Memorial Day. You get to sleep in tomorrow. So you need to come, and we're starting at 6 o'clock. And by the way, we had planned something a little more in depth. But I want to take a moment. And I want to honor all the fallen soldiers and all those that gave their lives. Come on, let's do it, Calvary. 
We honor, we don't only honor them, we honor the families that gave so much. I want to give people a chance to be filled with the Holy Ghost today. I want to see people filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to preach a normal message. This has not been a normal service. How many of you know that? The Holy Spirit has come in. And sometimes we try to make things longer than they need to be. I, I look in the upper room and the Holy Ghost just fell. They, they didn't have any great doctrinal teaching. He just came and changed people's lives. And that's what he's about to do today. But I had written a message, and I'll probably preach it a little bit later down the road, but I called it the Pentecostal pivot. The Pentecostal pivot. Tell everybody down your row, the Pentecostal pivot. Uh, how, how many of you understand that uh, we're a spirit-filled church? Okay, I got about probably 26% of you. I said, how many of you understand we are a, we're a spirit-filled church for real? We're not ashamed of that. Never have been, never will be. You say, well, Apostle, what would you be if you weren't Pentecostal? I'd be ashamed of myself. <laughs> Come on. Because to have all that power available that Jesus has given to the church and then not take advantage of it. So I'm not going to build a church that doesn't have a touch of the Holy Spirit on it. And this is, this is my 26th year being the pastor here. And... Man, I got overcome by that song. God has given me so much. He's, he's trusted me with so much. And I'm unqualified in the natural. Listen, I'm, I know my weaknesses, but I also know that I've got the sense enough to depend on the Holy Spirit, and He guides me and directs me. I'm not smart enough to lead colleges, universities, and I mean, I don't think I am, but somehow I'm doing it. But the Holy Spirit always helps us, doesn't he? How many of you would admit that the Holy Spirit has helped you be more than you ought to be? Come on. So I'm calling, I was calling today's message the Pentecostal Pivot. Now, I love to watch basketball. They're in the finals right now. I'm not going to say who I'm for because I don't want to split the church this morning. <laughs> but I, I grew up playing basketball. I played all sports, and I would have played professionally. I would have played professional basketball. The only thing that stopped me was I couldn't dribble, I couldn't shoot, and I couldn't jump. But if I could have done those three things, <laughs> I'd be on TV right now. Come on, y'all. But... I was always the big man on the, on the, on the course. It's people always come up to me and they say, you're taller in person or you're taller off the stage. Yeah, actually when I walk off the stage, I grow five inches. I don't know what happens. But I'm six foot five and that's tall for like high school and I played center. And I had a coach that taught me about my pivot foot. And you know, when, you, when you're dribbling the basketball, when you stop dribbling, it looks like it's over. But as long as you can pivot, you're still in the game. So you anchor one foot. Come on now, some of y'all play a little basketball. And you're able to drop step back. You show the basketball here. You put the badonka dong dong on them. Come on, somebody. And you, you're trying to make room. You show the basketball here. And you pivot. You fake. You shoot. Come on, somebody. So, so anybody that's ever played basketball, long as you got your pivot, you're still in the game. Whew. I said, long as you can pivot, it's not over. So, so 2,000 years ago, Jesus said, it is finished. And he died on the cross. And it looked like it was over. But three days later, heaven pivoted. <laughs> I said, heaven did a pivot. And Jesus rose from the dead. 
Aren't you glad that you serve a risen Savior today? How many of you are tracking with me? You understand what I'm saying? Because if you don't set your pivot foot, you travel. So heaven responded, pivot, and he resurrected. And then 50 days later, he ascended into heaven. And it looked like it was over. I'm sure that all the forces of the enemy said, whew, thank goodness. He's finally out of here. Jesus ascended. He's gone. <laughs> and we're not, we won't have to worry about it anymore. And three days later, or actually 53 days altogether, they're in the upper room after the resurrection. And heaven pivoted. And it was the Pentecostal pivot. And when you pivot, you either shoot or you pass. Oh, come on, somebody. So Jesus ascended and he pivoted and he passed the Holy Ghost to the church. <laughs> And the church has been scoring ever since. Come on, somebody. How many of you believe that the power of Pentecost is for today? All right. Give me, give me five minutes, maybe a little more. And I just want to explain what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because it's the, it's the pivot that your life needs. It's the power that your life needs. Now, watch this. They were in the upper room. The Holy Spirit was poured out. He said, I'll give you power. The Greek word for power is dunamis. It's where we get our English word dynamite. Come on, tell everybody down your row, boom. Yeah, dunamis, it means miracle working power. So when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you have miracle working power. Jesus never did a miracle until the Holy Spirit came on him. So I declare that in the next season, spirit-filled people are going to see miracles like they've never seen them before. Are you ready for miracles? Okay, there's different manifestations of tongues. There's tongues for interpretation. What does that mean? That means somebody speaks in tongues in a service, and then the Bible says, Paul instructs us of this, then after that person speaks in tongues, there is an interpretation of that tongue. And that interpretation exhorts and blesses the church. We've had it happen many times here at Calvary. Then there are tongues for intercession, tongues for prayer. What does that mean, Apostle? Romans says this, that the Holy Spirit helps our infirmities Paul said, for we know not what to pray for as we ought. But the Holy Spirit prays through us. Watch this. And he prays the mind and the will of God. That means, precious, when you have prayed, listen, young person, you pray with your finite knowledge. You pray about everything that you are aware of. But then the Holy Spirit is inside of you. Now, the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity who is every bit as much God as God himself. What does that mean? That means he's omniscient. Omniscient is omniscience. That means he knows everything. He's omnipresent. That means he's everywhere and he knows what's going on everywhere. Omnipresent doesn't mean that his kneecap is in Ormond and his elbow is in New York. No, it means Everything that God is, is everywhere at one point. So he knows everything and he is everywhere. And then he's omnipotent. Omnipotent is two words, omnipotent. Omni means all, potent means powerful. So omniscience, omnipotent, omnipresent gets inside of you and prays through you. So that means you pray everything that you know. Lord, you see my children. You see what they're going through. You see that addiction. 
You see that struggle. Lord, you see my problem. You see my financial situation. Lord, you see that health issue that my brother has or that problem that my family's facing or that addiction that I'm battling. And you pray in your finite mind, you pray everything you know. But then, when you have exhausted every word in English, everything that you know, then you make room. And the Bible said that the Holy Spirit prays through you. Omniscience begins to pray through you. Omnipotency begins to pray through you. Omnipresence begins to pray through you. The Holy Ghost begins to pray through you and praise things that you don't even know anything about. Who knows how many wrecks you've avoided? Who knows how many attacks on your family have been thwarted? Who knows how many times the devil would have destroyed your daughter or taken your son or taken your future, but you let that Holy Spirit rise up inside of you and you begin to pray. And listen, it's an unknown tongue. What does that mean? That means when I'm praying, I don't even know what I'm praying, but I'm praying the mind and the will of God. It's an unknown tongue and I believe if it's unknown to you, it's also unknown to the devil. And I believe that when you pray in the Holy Spirit, that the devil doesn't understand what you're praying because it's in heavenly language and how is hell going to ever understand heaven when you begin to pray in the Holy Spirit the devil begins to get wounded he begins to have to back up demons flee they don't understand it but their power is broken yeah. are you hearing me? <laughs> Woo, glory to God stay right here with me so when you pray in the Holy Spirit, it does damage to the devil. And he, the Holy Spirit is inside of you. Okay? He gets inside of you. You got a telephone in your belly. And a few chicken wings. Come on, somebody. And he begins to pray through you. The mind and the will of God. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, just raise your hands and thank Him for the things that He's prayed through you. Oh, begin to thank Him for the things that He shifted in your life, for the attacks that He thwarted that you didn't even know were coming. So, three types, three ways that the Holy Spirit manifests. I'm not trying to go deep. I'm just trying to make it simple for you to understand. Number one, there's the gift of tongues that's interpreted. Number two, there's the gift of prayer. When you pray, your prayer goes up to another level. You pray to all you know, and then the Holy Spirit says, move over and let me drive, because I know where we're going. <laughs> Hallelujah. In fact, I'm already there. All right. And then the third thing that the Holy Spirit does, Paul said, I will sing in the spirit and I will sing with my understanding. So when we begin to worship sometimes, we exhaust everything we have in English. Lord, you're wonderful, you're glorious, you're mighty, you're majestic. You're awesome, you're unstoppable, you're incredible. You're wonderful, you're counselor. You're mighty God, you're everlasting Father. You're the wheel within the wheel and the way right out of no way. Your hope, your help, your healer, you're the captain of the host. You're the lion of the tribe of Judah. You're my source, you're the way, you're the truth, you're the life, you're the lily of the valley. You're the sweet rose of Sharon. You're Yahweh Rapha, God, my healer. You're Yahweh Jireh, God, my provider. You're Yahweh Shalom, the Lord, my big I See what just happened there? When you exhaust everything you can say about the Lord in English, then all of a sudden that Holy Spirit will come. And who better to exalt God than the Holy Spirit in you? And you begin to Oh, the under the bus, 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 the under the bus,
You feel that oil coming in this room? Yeah, because the Holy Spirit begins to exalt God in you and through you. It's not complicated, but it is supernatural. I have people all the time, they say, you know, don't go to that Jim Rayleigh's church because they'll speak in tongues at that church. Yeah, we will. Right in your ear. Come on, somebody. We'll sure do it. Don't go to that Jim Rayleigh's church because they speak in tongues and nobody interprets. That's where you show your lack of knowledge. I wanted to say your ignorance, but I'm going to be kind. Because... Every time you hear somebody speak in tongues in church, it is not somebody that's exercising the gift of tongues that's going to be interpreted. Very often, it's worship and it's intercession that's manifesting in the building. So all you guys that have been sending me those inboxes, let it rest. We got it covered. God is good. We're worshiping. We're praying. We know the difference. We love you. Send an offering now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can y'all believe I'm 59 years old? Yeah, I do. He said, you look good. I said, preach. I can't believe I'm 59. But I know why I'm on the earth. One of the main reasons I'm on the earth. Some guys have different calls. I know who I'm called to be, and maybe you don't always like me because I stay who I am. And those of you that's been with me a long time, I'm still just Jim Rayleigh. I, I stay committed to the Holy Spirit and to the Word of God. That's just who I am. I who God's called me to be and one of the things one of the reasons that the Lord lets me stay in the world and lets me stay with opportunities and campuses is because I'm in the earth to promote the agenda of the Holy Spirit I, I really am it is I think the greatest gift in my life more than even preaching or leading. It's the gift to see people baptized in the Holy Spirit. Jade and Nicole were watching a service. Jade's our facilities manager. Give him and Nicole. They work our, all of our facilities. Man, they work hard. They were watching, right? You watched a Pentecost service. This is before they came to our church. They live in Palatka. They have a long, long drive. But and they still come. I got, I got like a Palatka de delegation that shows up. But here's the deal. They were watching the service, and when it was over, how old were your girls then? Twelve and eight, both of their girls were baptized in the Holy Spirit right in their living room. Come on. So today, the Lord's about to fill and real, refill people with the Holy Ghost. So stand up, everybody. John, come up here, son. How many of you want to just let the Holy Ghost get in this room and you want a Pentecostal pivot? Come on, you ready? You ready? So come on, just bring the worship team out here. Somebody just raise up your hands and begin to worship the Lord right now. Let's don't make it complicated. It's about to be powerful. This is the moment now. If you're filled with the Holy Ghost, let's just season the atmosphere with worship, with prayer. I know. I want everybody on the stage that's filled with the Holy Spirit. Put your mic in your mouth and join me praying in the Spirit right now. Oh, 
Oh, the dove is in the room. The dove is at your house right now. The dove is at somebody's house watching by live stream right now. The dove is in your house right now. Stand up at your chair. Stand up at your recliner. Stand up at the table right now. This is how it happened in the upper room. I want every spirit filled person. That's it, that's it. Oh, now, if you're in this room, you'd say, Apostle, I'd like to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'd like to experience what you've been teaching about. Or if it's been a while since you've prayed in the Spirit, or you've been feeling a little bit dry, I hear the Lord say, I'm going to feel and refill people this morning. The Lord said there are people that are going to be filled for the first time, but there are also people that have been dry, and you've been underneath an attack of the enemy. It's like, it's like uh, tried to pull the power of the Holy Spirit away from you. Now look at me right in the eyes. If, if you've dealt with that, if you felt dry, you need to come forward. Because the Bible said they were, look at me, I'm trying to, I want to show you something precious. It said they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Somebody say baptized. Now the word baptized, it's the Greek word baptismo. And it means to be baptized again and again and again. Pastor John, it means to be filled and filled and filled and filled, continuously filled. You say, well, Apostle, why don't I just get filled one time and that's it? The, the reason that you have to be continually filled, baptismal, over and over and over again and filled with the Holy Spirit, watch this, it's because you leak. And one of the things that's holding back revival is leaky believers. Come on, somebody. But you got to be filled and then continuously refilled. So who wants to be filled with the Holy Spirit today? Okay, who would like to be refilled? Okay, if you want to be filled or refilled, get up here right now. Come on. Come on, I'm not saying. If you got saved, if you gave your heart to Jesus just a moment ago, then get up here. Come on, I want everybody that wants a fresh touch of the Holy Ghost Come on, there ought to be hundreds of you. Hallelujah. 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 God's about to refill and fill. God's about to refill and fill. Hallelujah. There's some parents that need to come. There's a, there's a husband that needs to come. There's a father that needs to come. Come on, hundreds of people are coming. I feel like there's some people who are up in stadium seating. You need to come right now. God will refill your life. He'll teach you how to pray. Come on. I'm praying for you in the Holy Ghost. Here they come. Here they come. Hundreds are coming. Hundreds are coming. You are welcome, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you just, just, just 30 more seconds. John, sing through one song. And if you need to come, come up here quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Sing one song, John. Let this be another like the flame we burn for you. Holy, holy, holy spirit. Like the mighty rushing wind for your spirit.
Now, I want everybody to press in as close as you can. Press in as close as you can. Now, if you know that you are filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm going to ask you to help me now. If you know that you got a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit in your life, I want you to come and stand behind these right now. We don't always give a whole church altar call, but if you know that you've got something fresh in your life, just move out and stand behind people right now. Just move out and stand behind them. Come on, just stand behind them. If you know that you've got this power working in your life, hallelujah, I'm going to ask you to help me. I'm going to ask you to help me. The, 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 the aisles may fill up, I, but I want you to do something for me. I'm going to ask you to touch the person in front of you. Just come stand right in the aisles. Come stand right in the aisles. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you'll help me, sing it one more time. If you'll help me and you'll just, you'll, you'll just let your, release your faith and you'll come. I want you to come right now. If you pray in the Holy Spirit on a regular basis, I want you to come and stand behind me. No, 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 no. I want every young person that prays in the Holy Spirit, get up here right now. Every young adult. Every mom and dad, if you'll help me. Every mother in the church, come help me. It's about to happen. Hey. The Holy Ghost is about to fall on people. Let this be Man, I see people already getting filled. I see people already getting filled. Are you ready? Now watch. We're, I'm going to explain to you how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm not manipulating anybody. I'm trying to share with you what I've learned in almost 40 years of preaching. Now watch this. The Bible says in James, look at me in the eyes, everybody listen closely. Unless you're being filled, you just help yourself. But James is the half-brother of Jesus, and he wrote the book of James. And James said this. He said, all manner of animals are tamed. He said, but no man can tame the tongue. Now, some of you are saying, well, apostle, why does it have to be tongues? That's a little bit out there. Why, why, why couldn't the Lord have chosen something else? Like, you know, wave five times and stomp your feet three or something like that. He did it because, see, no matter how saved you are, there's always a mess trying to get in your mouth. No matter how long you've been serving the Lord, doubt will try to get in your mouth. Fear will try to get in your mouth. Some of y'all, I'm praying for you because you got a cuss word in your mouth. Come on. You're, you're, you're always on the verge of speaking negatively. But when the Holy Spirit prays through you, He tames your tongue. Because in that time when you're going, you're not praying any doubt. Ooh, God's going to touch you, daughter. You're not praying any fear. You're not praying any negativity. In that moment, you're in succinct harmony with the Holy Spirit, and He's praying through you. So what happens when you pray in the Holy Spirit? You're praying the mind, Paul said, and the will of God. Okay? Now watch this. I want you to understand that when you pray in the Holy Ghost, look at me in the eye. The Bible said that they spoke as the Spirit gave them the utterance. That doesn't mean that they were in a trance and they didn't even know what was going on. When you pray in the Holy Spirit, you are fully aware that you are praying in the Holy Spirit. You, you're not in a trance. 
It's a choice that you make. Here's what happens. As you ask the Lord to fill you with the Holy Spirit, you, got to, you have to speak. If you don't speak, it won't be spoken. See, you were saved by faith. You're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit by faith. Look at me now. Everything about the kingdom requires faith. So what's going to happen, number one, you're just going to have to open your mouth. So right now, everybody in the front here, just open your mouth and begin to worship the Lord. Come on, just open your mouth. Say whatever, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. You got to get your voice in there. It's not hard. Just hallelujah, praise the Lord. Magnify you, Jesus. Glorify you. Come on. I need everybody that's here, if you're really serious about it, slip up your hands and begin to praise him right now. And put your voice on it. Put your voice on it. You may not even know what to say. Just say hallelujah over and over again. Say praise the Lord over and over again. If you don't even know how to how to pray, just begin. I bless you. I bless you. I thank you. I thank you. I love you. I love you. You, you got It's going to be your voice that speaks it. All right. That's good. That's good. Now, here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to fill us. Look at me. Anybody who's filled with the Holy Ghost knows this is true. You're going to begin to, in your mind, words will come to you that will make no sense. It might be one word. It might be two words. It might be three words. It might be five words. But you have to speak those words in faith. Now, your, your, your physical man is going to tell you, this is not God, this is just you. But no, you are in a moment right now, and the Holy Spirit is in this room. And what's going to come to you, you're going to have to speak it by faith. If you don't speak it, it won't be spoken. Now, it's not going to make sense to you, but it's an unknown tongue. Look at me now, I need you to get this. So when you, when you speak it, you speak it by faith. It might be one word, it might be two words, it might be five words. But it's in that moment that you say, Lord, See, how many of you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you would say, Apostle, that's exactly how it works. I have to speak it and I have to say it by faith. Wave at me if you understand where I'm coming from. It's, it's not complicated. And I want you to see this, buddy, I love you. I want you to understand this. It's a gift. You don't have to strive for it. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to be good enough for it. Bill, I love you, buddy. You've helped me so much. Bill's a great plumber. If you have plumbing problems, call Bill the plumber. He'll change your life. So watch. You have to speak it by faith. Now, all y'all that are here that already have the Holy Ghost, how many of you know you don't get a dead battery to charge up another dead battery? Like if somebody is laying on the floor and they need they need mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, you don't get a dead person and throw right up on the head. Eh, yeah, come back. No, you get somebody who's got a little... You get somebody who's got some breath. That's your job. You're going to stand behind them and you're going to pray in the Holy Ghost. When I release this, everybody on this stage that's filled with the Holy Ghost is going to pray in the Holy Ghost. Everybody in this building that's filled with the Holy Ghost is going to pray in the Holy Ghost. And God's about to baptize and refill hundreds of people here and hundreds online in the name of Jesus. Are you ready for it? All right. How many of you? Wave at me if you understood everything Apostle said. All right. I want you to raise up your hands right now. Okay, I want everybody else, y'all get ready to lay hands on who's laying hands on somebody in front of you. We're going to release this power. I want all of my staff to get up here. I want Pastor Don to get up here. We're going to move through and we're going to pray for people. And we're about to have an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Are you ready? So I want you to raise up your hands and say, Holy Spirit. Everybody in the room, say, Holy Spirit. I'm available. Fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. I want to pray in the Spirit. I need to pray in the Spirit. So Lord, baptize me in the Holy Ghost. Give me the faith to speak it out. Whatever you put in my mind, whatever you put in my heart, 
I will speak it by faith. I will speak it out by faith. In Jesus' name. Now raise up your hands. Yedabasataya. I release the Holy Spirit on you right now. If you can't speak in tongues yet, speak in English. But begin to open up your mouth. I want every one of my staff, move son, move, lay hands on people right now. I want every one of my staff to begin to move. Come on, Christian, where you at? Get down there in the aisle. Get down there in the aisle. Get down there in the, aisle. Get down there in the floor. Jeremy and Liz, I need you up here right now. Pray for people. Come, come on, Cindy, move through and begin to pray for people. I'm coming down in a minute. But I need every staff member, if you're an elder in my church and you'll pray for somebody, get up here and pray for people right now. Debbie, move through the crowd. People are being filled right now. People are being filled with the Holy Ghost right now. Y'all, I want everybody in the whole church now to begin to pray in tongues if you're filled with the Holy Ghost. People are being filled at home right now. People are being filled at home right now. Receive the Holy Ghost in your house. That's it. I see it, Seth. There it is. Let that flow, Seth. There it is all over you, son. I see it, Seth. That's it. Young people are being filled. Come on, daughter. Come on, man of God. Come on, man of God. Feel with the Holy Ghost. Feel with the Holy Ghost. Feel with the Holy Ghost. Come on, daughter. Begin to worship the Lord. Begin to worship the Lord, daughter. That's it. Let that flow. That's it. That's it, son. That's it, son. That's it. Y'all that are being filled all across this room. They're being filled all across this room. It's happening before our eyes. Everybody on the stage, put the mic in your mouth and pray in the Holy Ghost right now if you feel. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Come on, daughter. Jackie, move through. That's it, daughter. That's it. Oh, oh young people are being filled right now. This whole section right now, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. This whole section right now, he's filling people all through here right now. He's filling people down this aisle right now. He's filling young ladies right now. Open your mouth. Open your mouth by faith. That's it, son. It's happening right here. Right here, daughter. Bring it right here. You're being, look at, raise your hands. You have always hungered for the supernatural. You've always hungered for the supernatural. The Lord said you finally plugged into the real thing. Feel with the Holy Ghost. It's happening. Come on, God is feeling people right here. Oh, we receive it, Lord. We receive it, Lord. We receive it, Lord.
They're being filled across this room. They're being filled across this room. Young people are being filled right now. Throw your hands in the air and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Pray right there for him. Open your mouth, son. Hallelujah. Somebody throw your hands up and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, worship in the Spirit right now. Hallelujah. 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 He's in the room. Sing it, John. Somebody raise your hands and worship. up your hands I feel the Holy Spirit here I want to obey the Lord the Lord's uh, when the Holy Spirit comes he gives power and and he gives power for deliverance and the Lord said right now I'm breaking addiction in this room the Lord said I'm breaking pornography off of people right now in this room the Lord said I am breaking prescription drug addiction in this place and online right now. Somebody believe with me right now that the Holy Ghost is literally in this room setting people free. Come on, if you believe he can do it, give God a shout right now. Give God a shout right now. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord said, I'm breaking, I'm breaking it, I'm breaking it. I'm breaking addiction right now. Someone has been addicted to marijuana. Hallelujah. And the Lord said, I'm breaking that dependency on marijuana right now. Someone has been addicted to alcohol. You've been drinking about a case of beer a day. But God said, I'm about to break that addiction off of your life. Oh. Now, I want to close with this, and then I want you to come back tonight. Who's ready for a, a radical revival night of miracles, healings, and signs and wonders? Today was all about seeing people filled with the Holy Ghost, but who's going to come back for a radical night of revival? I can't make you come. I would come to your house and pick you up if I could. But it's going to be a night like no other. If you haven't been in our revival nights, we've had stage four cancer healed. That just this last week, I, I, you remember the baby that had her uh, kidneys healed? You remember that? Her name was Hadley, and they brought her up here, and I held her, spoke healing over her. And she was facing multiple surgeries in her kidneys. 
And then while I was praying for her, I spoke that God was healing in NIC units and someone in Chicago's baby got healed. And they said the baby would never be able to have a normal life. The next day they tested the baby. All of the disease was gone. Six hours later, the baby was dismissed. The little baby Hadley that I held in my arms, they took her for her pre-op. The doctor came in and said, I don't understand it, but these are not the same kidneys that I was looking at just last month. Something has happened in this child's kidneys. She, she was her second surgery was scheduled this week her mom sent me a picture of Hadley and what I had prophesied they had put it over Hadley's crib and they had confessed that every night and she said apostle we are not at the hospital we are not having the second surgery Hadley is healed and we continue to confess what you declared I'm trying to tell you that the healer is still healing that the way maker is still making a way that the baptizer is still baptizing that the refiner is still refining and the fire is still firing so tonight we're going to release the Holy Spirit in this room. There will be miracles. There will be wonders. It will be amazing. And we're going to start at 6 o'clock. I want you to join me. Now, how many of you were filled or refilled with the Holy Ghost? Raise your hands right now. Hallelujah. Hundreds. I want you right now to give God a radical thank you. Hallelujah. Now, anyone that didn't speak in tongues, I want you to look at me right now or even by live stream. That does not mean that it's over. You don't have to be in church to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. This one was baptized in her bed at, about, at eight years old right across the street at our house. But I know a lot of you were filled. So everybody raise your hands. I decree and declare you who were not filled, you will be filled. I know almost everybody was filled, but if there's some that were not filled, I declare you will be filled. I declare tonight that it, even tonight as you worship the Lord, that the Holy Spirit can come right in your room and fill you with the Holy Ghost. Now raise up your hands, everybody. Come on. I declare you that were filled. This is not a one and done. Tonight, you'll pray in the Holy Spirit. When you get in your car, you'll pray in the Holy Spirit. When you wake up in the morning, you'll pray in the Holy Spirit. Now this is a lifestyle. You'll never be the same again. Now if you believe Pentecost is real, miracles is real, and revival is for today, and you're glad to be in a church that's a New Testament church, open up your mouth and give God a shout. All right, last thing. Tonight, we're going to keep that baptismal tank open. And if you want to be baptized, we'll baptize you tonight. Anybody love Jesus? All right. If you're my special guest, I want to shake your hand. Tell everybody in your neighborhood, say, it's not over. Say, we, we've got tonight. Hallelujah. But if you're my special guest and I haven't met you, I'm going to go back to Guest Central. I love you so much. If you want to stay around here, the, the worship team will worship for a while. If you want to pray, if people are still being ministered to, we allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. Go ahead, Pastor John.